There aren't many fire stations in the world with a fleet of armored personnel carriers available. But there aren't many fire stations that have to serve the space shuttle fleet and its astronauts either. NASA's Kennedy Space Center firefighters used four of the tank-like M113s to protect them and the astronauts in case of an emergency. On launch day, two would stand ready with teams of firefighters inside to dash in and rescue the astronauts. Another was based near the launch pad empty, set up so the crews could drive away from danger themselves. The fourth was a spare. Well, the reason for the M113s is for our rescue team, for the astronauts, we needed an armored vehicle in order for us to go from where we're stationed for launch to the pad and then up to the top of the pad to perform a rescue of the astronauts. An M113 weighs 11 tons and it's steered with two levers that control the respective track. With its rumbling six-cylinder engine, the vehicle doesn't accelerate so much as lunge but it can go practically anywhere and offers considerable protection. It's also amphibious, so it can go into the water and swim, although that aspect is rarely employed for Kennedy's vehicles. This just gives us the protection from whatever environment we may be going into and then be evacuating from in an emergency. The driver themselves, they are squeezed in there like a sardine into where the drivers are. Um, it's very difficult to drive the M113 with your full protection on. Um, with a mask on, with a helmet on top of that, with the hatches closed on the M113, the driver's field of vision is very limited. They're looking through about a six inch by two and a half inch prism. Uh, as they're driving down the road or going to the pad. During a launch, we're stationed about nine-tenths of a mile from the pad. We're the closest people, humans, to the pad when the shuttle launches. Right around T minus 10, we will um, don the rest of our gear, put our air packs on, we'll get inside the M113s and we'll call what's button them up. We'll close all the hatches, we'll close all the ramps, we go on our intercom system so we can talk to each other within the M113, but also we have radios that we can um, hear out to the NTDs if they were to call us up for an emergency. They kind of keep us informed of what's going on at the pad because other than the driver and one person that's standing in the commander's hatch to see, no one else can see what's going on. We don't actually know it's launched until you see it light up inside the M113. Every astronaut that has gone into space on a shuttle has learned to drive an M113 during training. Many have driven them several times. The training was a standard part of the Terminal Countdown Demonstration Test, a launch day dress rehearsal known as TCDT. We get them in there, we go through the procedures, we give, go through the capabilities of the M113, and then they each get a chance to actually drive the vehicle in an emergency situation where they're driving it over rough terrain, down roads, and uh, I would say every single crew member absolutely loves it, and we always invite them back another time when they're not um, scheduled for a mission. The M113s were never used in a launch pad emergency, but were based near the launch pad for each launch of the shuttle program's 30 years. Although never called on, the firefighters who stood ready never felt the training or machinery were wasted. We, uh, we are the only country in the world that has a specialized rescue team for the astronauts. Um, so yes, all of us, and I think I can speak for the whole team, are very proud of what we do and what we accomplish here and what we protect. I mean, we're protecting um, you know, the United States space program and their astronauts. <laughs>